come on girl, you're literally on the first floor of a New York City apartment with huge windows and no blinds or curtains. Everybody can see into your apartment. Everybody. That is literally my nightmare. <laughs> It's Kristen and today we're talking about season one of You, a psychological thriller that was adapted from the book by Caroline Kepnes, which premiered on Lifetime. The show is currently streaming on Netflix and it's actually officially moving to Netflix for its second season as well. This project was developed by Sarah Gamble, who has worked on Supernatural and The Magicians, and Greg Berlanti, who has all of Berlanti Productions behind him. They've worked on so many projects that I love, everything from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina to the DC Universe shows to Riverdale to God Friended Me and so much more. I had originally heard about you when it was on Lifetime, I even checked out the first episode, but I didn't end up continuing. But now everyone and their mom is talking about you, so I figured I gotta check it out see what all the fuss is about. So You is about Joe, a bookstore manager who meets Beck, an aspiring writer. He gathers information about her through the internet and social media to get closer to her, which quickly turns from a crush to obsession. He'll literally do anything to be with her, even remove every obstacle or person in his way to keep her in his life. The first season stars Penn Bagley, Elizabeth Lale, Shay Mitchell, and even has a surprising guest appearance from John Stamos. We're mostly following the show from Joe's perspective, and we get to follow his internal monologue and kind of learn about his thought process and why he does the things that he does. I think that gives us a lot of insight into his character, and something that's kind of interesting is that there's sort of two sides of him. There's this one side who's this really charming, sympathetic, empathetic character who, you know, really feels for his neighbor and her son who are going through an abusive situation and he's really trying to help them. And on the other side you have this kind of manic obsessive version of Joe where, you know, for him, right or wrong doesn't matter as long as you are doing everything you can for the person that you love. Or in this case, removing obstacles from Beck's life in order to help her. I think sometimes there was this dynamic where it felt like Joe didn't necessarily want to do the things that he was doing, but he felt he had to, or I guess he could kind of like separate himself from his actions, sort of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But at the same time, there were moments where I was like, I just don't believe this guy as this stealthy stalker who can like sneak into someone's house and not get caught. You know, there was like so many times where I was like, this is so unrealistic, he would have been caught immediately, and things just happen to conveniently work out for him each time. And then when it comes to Beck, she's just this really self-centered character who constantly needs someone to take care of her, whether that's Joe or her friend Peach. She starts off the show not knowing who she is, and she even tells us that, and I feel like as the story goes on, she never really changes or grows, she kind of just stays the same and allows the different things in her life to kind of push her around and, and influence her life. Beck is also just completely oblivious, you know, I feel like this whole time you can see all these warning signs, these red flags that Joe is a creep and she doesn't notice them. Like there is this moment where Joe has been tracking her and literally following her and she notices him and is like, are you following me? And he's like, oh no, you know, I just want to make up from the terrible situation we had the other night and I saw that you posted this thing on Instagram so I googled it and I, you know, traced it back to here and found you so we could talk. That sounds even more creepy and stalkery than him just following her. But she just accepts it as normal. Not only that, but she's the object of affection for more than one stalker. And come on girl, you're literally on the first floor of a New York City apartment with huge windows and no blinds or curtains. Everybody can see into your apartment. Everybody. That is literally my nightmare. Along the way we get to meet Joe's co-workers, some of his neighbors, and we get to meet Beck's friends. Um, some of the characters we get a little bit more of a deeper storyline, like the neighbors and Beck's friend Peach, but for everyone else it's really more surface level, and I think some of those characters actually seemed interesting and I would have loved to learn more about them. But you know, the story is more focused on the wild situation going on between Joe and Beck. And boy does this show do the absolute most. They literally cover everything from social media, to putting people on a pedestal, to toxic and controlling relationships, they even dabble in abuse and drugs and jealousy, and there's constantly twists and turns that'll keep you on the edge of your seat, that'll keep you guessing. You know, I think the first episode started out decently strong, but as it kept going, I was just really struggling to get through it, and then I think when they got to like the last two episodes, like that finale, I really started getting more invested again and more interested in what was going on. It's just that like when it comes down to it, I really dis 
disliked both Joe and Beck. And pretty much all of the characters in this show are very manipulative. They're liars. They're not great people. I think the fact that the characters have so much duality to them, like yes, they are terrible, but also they do have some redeeming qualities, really makes this an interesting story because nobody is just good or bad. You know, there's times when you hear why Joe has done the things that he's done and you're like, that doesn't make any sense, you're insane. And then there's other moments where you're like, well I guess if you think about it, that person did a bad thing too so maybe it kind of evens it out. Even with Beck, you know, she's this aspiring writer, she's so talented, but at the same time she has these dark secrets, she's a liar, she's a cheater. It kind of makes you question things a little bit. You even see it with the terrible neighbor Ron who's a parole officer but also an alcoholic abusive boyfriend you know and I think that that's something that is carried throughout the whole series. We're gonna get into a little bit of spoilers here but one of the episodes that I thought was really intriguing was when Joe snuck into Peach's secluded Connecticut house to spy on her and Beck. I think there's a lot of really interesting things going on in this episode. First of all, he was in a car accident out in the woods in this episode, and man, he got his head effed up, he's bleeding, he's having these like hallucinations about his ex-girlfriend Candace. I actually think that was one of the coolest aspects of the story was to learn a little bit more about her. And then there's this moment when he's in Peach's house and he's trying to sew up his wound, and he just ends up like sticking the needle into his head and passing out, and oof, oh, it just gave me the creeps. I think in this episode we get another chance to see just how creepy both Peach and Joe are and also a chance to kind of see a little bit more into Joe's warped mind. We see Joe peeking in on an unsuspecting Beck while she's in the bath and then he sees Peach is doing the same thing and he's judging her for it. And that's an example of one of several times in the show when Joe I feel like kind of separates himself from his actions. You know he's doing the same thing as someone else and yet what he's doing he thinks is okay and he can justify it but he thinks that the other person is wrong instead of realizing that like both actions are wrong. And again how is he able to sneak around this mansion? This is the first time he's ever been there, they're in the house and he has a serious head injury to top it all off. This is definitely a show where you have to suspend disbelief. I've gotta say I think out of the whole series my favorite episodes had to be at the very end the last two episodes. I think that's when things really picked up and it got really interesting and sucked me more into the story. So I want to kind of deep dive into the finale and talk about what that could mean for season two. By the second to last episode, you know, it looks like things are finally working out for Joe and Beck. Beck has finally admitted to her cheating. The two of them realize that they both still love each other and it looks like they're going to move forward and make things work. That is until Beck discovers Joe's secret treasure box of horrors that documents every terrible thing he's done, complete with Benji's rattling teeth. She tries to play it cool but Joe knocks her out and locks her in the giant clear box that's in the basement of the bookstore. I think this is actually where we got to see some of the best acting of the season where Beck is trying to do whatever she can to get Joe to let her out and ironically this is also one of the first times that Beck is able to actually sit down and write and ends up creating what ends up being her first and only novel. We also went on this crazy cliffhanger where Joe's ex Candace, who we've thought this whole season is dead, possibly killed by Joe, makes a comeback. Even Joe seems surprised as if he thought she was dead. So that makes me wonder, did he try to kill her and just didn't succeed? Did someone else try to hurt her? Is that not the story at all? You has already been picked up for a season 2 and Sarah Gamble has already confirmed that just like the sequel book, Hidden Bodies, Joe will head off to California. California. But there are still a lot of questions like will Joe be exposed by the DNA evidence that was found at Peach's house? Will the private investigator that the Salingers hired continue his search? Will anyone find out what happened to Ron? Will Dr. Nikki come back? Will we see the ghost of Beck? And what does Candace want? You know, she obviously came back for a reason. I think there's definitely ways for all of this drama to follow Joe from New York to California. Overall, I don't think you was a masterpiece, and I think it's filled with a lot of manipulative and terrible characters, but at the same time, I do think that there are a lot of twists and turns and cliffhangers that will keep any mystery lover intrigued. You know, with the creators and just the team behind the show, I was expecting to like it a lot more, and I will admit, originally, I was not interested in continuing with the story, but after those last two episodes and that cliffhanger, I am interested to know what happens in season two. What did you guys think about you? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you a little bit mixed like I was? I would love to hear your thoughts. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click that subscribe button because I come out with new videos every week. See ya!